What is going on, motorsports fans? This is the best segment ever, Down and Dirty with Doug, brought to you by Sunstar and on the one and only Power to the Ground Media Network, where we cover everything motorsports, primarily of the two-wheeled variety, but you never know. You might get some quads, you might get some jet skis, you might get some lawnmowers. Nobody really knows what Doug does on the weekends, so that is why we are here. But I can guarantee you, if you can ride it, you can race it, and I'm going to be there to try to cover it. So for this segment, it's going to be a little bit different than what we are. We're not going to go out there and uh, and run around basically the Midwest uh, checking out different uh, small series, individual amateur tracks, all the stuff like that. Um, I was talking to Jesse earlier and we were kind of going back and forth as to what happened and who was to blame for the Roxon Wilson Houston three snafu. And I have come to the conclusion after listening to multiple podcasts throughout the day, reading multiple forums, talking to friends that I definitely have the unpopular opinion, but is not it's the unpopular opinion because I think people are too afraid just to call it out because Roxon lost this race all by himself and I don't think that Dino had too much to do with it. So today we're going to jump into it. We're going to watch the last maybe minute 15, minute 18 of the race going into the final two laps and I'm going to attempt to break down what I saw compared to what other people have. So. I guess let's just jump into it. I don't really have any other words to say about that. So here we are at Houston 3. Uh, we're coming down. I can't read the time, but I, I want to say it's around like a minute 13, minute 11, somewhere around there. Uh, we're starting to, uh, to see these guys. So you can already see that they're in lap traffic. There's the one blue flag that I have seen in this clip the whole time. The rest of them, he, he was like he was dumbfounded. He was just standing there, staring at Roxon, chasing down Wilson, staring at Webb, chasing down Roxon. It was, and he threw it for Fernandez, but he didn't throw it for Wilson. So I, I don't really know what to say to that. So at the beginning of this clip, I think it, he, Webb was about a minute and eight seconds behind, or not a minute, one point eight seconds behind. I do apologize for that. Numbers aren't my strong point. So you can see that he is clearly sucking it in every lap he's he's going down maybe six tenths four tenths to six tenths so he really turns it on especially through that uh, rhythm section going into the sand I don't think Roxon has anything anything for him so there's our first glimpse at Wilson right when they go past Ferrandez and I want you to remember that wall jump going into that triple into that hard 180 so as you can see, I mean, Webb is closing the gap. I mean, he turned the steam on full bore ahead, just just going. Like, if he was on the wick any harder, I think he would twist it right off the side of the bike. So this is the spot where he's just, I mean, he walks away from Roxon after he gets past, or after he gets past him. But just through the sand, I mean, his bike looks excellent. He has excellent position. And... Now we're up to the white flag. The white flag is where all the fun starts. And Webb actually blitzes the whoops. It's Webb blitzing whoops, which is crazy. So right here, right here, I want you to notice that Roxon decided to follow Wilson through the corner instead of going high. In most motorsports, this is going to be kind of your go-to, your SOP, your standard operating procedure. So you're going to have two choices. You can either hope that the lapper maintains his line and you can go around him or you can follow him through a sharp corner like this is, you know, I mean, obviously Roxon, he wants to go. He feels the pressure from Webb. He knows Webb is right there. I mean, he can pretty much feel Webb's breath on the back of his neck, right? So I think he's starting to get a little flustered and Wilson is doing a great job of holding his line which I think is, is very important, even after the next part, where if you watch, boop, right there. Roxon gets on the wick way faster than Wilson has time to actually put his back wheel onto the ground and move. 
So Roxon runs into the back of Webb and then gets all crazy. He gets like the woody legs coming off the side of the bike and, you know, stuff like that. And that's what's really going to set up this pass for Webb. And I think that that was probably the single most important decision that Roxon made that affected the outcome of this this race. So we'll continue through. There's his little woody legs, double, double. And then he almost whiskey, well, not almost, he pretty much did whiskey throttle. It's at this exact moment when he's all discombobulated, he's barely on the bike, he's already messed up the rhythm, that he decides to grab an absolute handful and chase who I believe might be Bogle all the way up in the top corner going off the track. He decides that he's going to chase him all the way up to the top, leaving the bottom of the track open for Webb, one of the great technicians of this sport in the modern era. Out of all the people, like, if it was Tomac, leave it open, because he's, he's probably not going to nail the inside. But it's Webb. Webb is a master assassin in the bottom of turns, especially on the last lap. I mean, he won a Supercross title in 2019 pretty much based off of his racecraft. And this is the kind of clip where we actually get to see it and happen. So as Roxon is going way out in left field, Webb, of course, throws it on the bottom, follows Wilson right through. Now, Wilson is not slow through the corners. Wilson is still a top 10 guy even though he had an off night. He can keep up with these guys through the corners. So I don't know why you wouldn't want to follow him, especially when it's a flat corner and a 180. It's not like you're going to rail a berm. It's not like you're going to block pass him. Like, just follow him through. Close off the inside line, get on the wick, and jump the gun. So, like, the whole situation is almost like Roxon just completely forgot how to race. So it, it, it just boggles my mind. Not to be confused with Bogle, who we saw just pulling off the track all random willy-nilly style. So, as you can see, when, when Wilson comes over, I mean, he jumps, I don't know, three or four ruts to come over and just absolutely slam the door on Roxon to pr essentially seal up the win for that night. I mean, if it wasn't for that, that block that we're looking on the screen right now, I think Roxon would have had to drive coming off of that corner going through that rhythm section to pass Webb back. But it didn't happen because Webb, Webb is an inside line assassin. He knew that was going to happen, you know. So he threw that thing wide and just gave it all the wick that that KTM had. I, I don't think there's a single pony that is not being used to run away from Roxon right now. So and then, as you can see, I mean, you can tell just by how Roxon is, is – his his positioning on the bike right now is different than what it was when he was in first place. I mean, he's angry. He's, he, he's mad. There's no doubt about it. And he's, and choosing the outside line right there. I don't understand why you wouldn't do that. Knowing you're going into a bull turn where you might be able to throw a block pass. So it's those small little mistakes, the three or four of them added together in what a 70 foot section that really sealed the deal and i think wilson issuing that apology was just him trying to get in front of it to move on because we got indy next week he doesn't want to be dealing with all this stuff you know what i mean so i honestly think that if roxon was looking for an apology or was mad at somebody he should have went to his motorhome straight into the bathroom don't even change look at the man in the mirror straight in the eyes and demand an apology from him because he was the one that lost that race and webb was the one that capitalized on it i mean kudos to webb he's i mean what can you say i mean that dude put on a clinic on that last lap everything that you're supposed to do he did and roxon put on a clinic too I mean, the whole race, he he was excellent, you know. But that last lap, the one lap that matters the absolute most, 
is when it fell apart. He sold the farm. He, I, he forgot what he was doing almost. So that is my unpopular opinion. Please, please let me know how you feel on this subject, either by going to the Power to the Ground Facebook page or Power the Number 2, so it's PowerToTheGround.com with a number 2, Join up, become a member, come talk to me and Jesse on the Talk MX. Let us know how you feel, kind of how you feel about this breakdown. Um, we're on there quite a bit. I mean, we monitor it, so you'll definitely get an answer back. It's We try to leave this as open forumed as we can so that we can engage with the fans, um, especially our fans. Uh, we do love y'all. So that's it for this segment of Down and Dirty with Doug, brought to you by Sunstar and on the one and only Power to the Ground Media Network. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you later.